We are doing so much pivoting, we're about to fall off the basketball court. <laughs> that was a bona fide dad joke. All right, so in the first video, we talked about pivoting for like a t-test situation where you got groups separated into different columns. And then in the last video, we talked about pivoting when you have time measured variables separated into different columns. In this video, we're going to introduce a more complicated and simpler way. How can it be both? I don't know, but it is. It's gonna be complicated, but it's gonna be simpler. There, I said it. And we're gonna be using regular expression to do that. That's the complication, regex. So in the last video, we created two data sets and then merged them somehow. In this video, we're gonna take care of all of that in one step. So it's gonna be simpler in that it's fewer lines of code, much fewer lines of code, but it's harder because it uses regex. I am feeling the stats love today. Here we are in my R screen. All right, so I'm gonna show you the code and then I will break it down for you. So we're gonna use the pivot longer. Well, let me go ahead and start by reading in the data set. So I will say depression underscore wide is equal to read.csv data forward slash depression underscore wide dot CSV. I think that's what it's called. Ah, no, it is not. So I'm gonna go and navigate to my folder it is called depression wide. Oh, I have an extra space there. Okay, there we go. So depression wide, we've got our depression data set. And then of course, I always like to go depression underscore wide. I like to do head for my data set, make sure it came in okay. And it looks fabulous, except that uh, both depression and stress are spread out over columns. So now what can we do? So we're gonna make a couple modifications. One in calls before we did it twice where we took depression one through four and then stress one through four and created two different data sets. Now we're gonna say all of these are time varying variables. And then once we've done that, we're gonna change our names to variable to something that's a little more complicated. And before we just had uh, we just had to specify one name time, so we're still going to specify time. But now we have to add this other argument, which is dot value. And like I write here, dot value tells R that the name of the new columns it's going to create is contained within the old columns. And when you use names two and you use the dot value, you need to add this names underscore pattern. And so names underscore pattern is how R is going to tell which variables go in which column. And so then it requires, uh, again, what is called regex or regular expression, which is uh, how you communicate with R, how to deal with strings, basically. And so uh, what this is doing is the parentheses basically represent groupings. So I'm saying that there's a group of characters, in this case, depression, that is separated by an underscore. So it's depression underscore one. And I'm telling it that the information you need is contained within this. So the parentheses indicate how some sort of a separation is gonna happen. So I'm telling R that, all right, before the underscore, which is right here, there's a group of characters um, that I'm treating as one unit. And then there's another group of characters that comes after that I'm treating as another unit. And so the dot basically tells car, tells R to look for any character. And then the plus tells R to match that character one or more times. And so what it's going to do is it's going to match any character one or more times until it gets to the underscore. And so that's my way of telling R to take the entire word that comes before the underscore and create a unit out of that. Again, that's what the parentheses mean. We're gonna treat it as a unit. Then find any character after the underscore and put that in a group. And so that's going to take the number. So the names pattern is basically saying, all right, the value is contained within this pattern, which is going to be everything before the underscore. And then the time variable is going to be everything that comes after the underscore, which is the number. And so if I were to run all of that, I would get something that looks like this. And now time, now remember we specified what value time should be right here. So whatever came after the underscore, it's now put in the observations there. 
And then what used to be depression is now being put as the value for depression. And if all that was gobbledygook to you, that's okay. If you want to see more information about pivoting, particularly stuff like this, you can visit this link here, which I will also put in the description. I don't expect you to know every single detail and understand everything that I just said, because in order to understand what's going on, you need to know regex a little bit better than I can explain it. Um, but if you're in a similar situation, at least you have some example code about what you can do and potential avenues that you might be able to modify to be able to get your own code to work. So with that, let me go ahead and end by giving you some practice that you can do. And the practice is there is a billboard data set just called billboard. It is within tidyverse. So you can just load it by typing in billboard and it contains sales for almost 400 songs and their rankings are spread out in separate columns across weeks. So your job is to convert the data set to be tidy data. And with that, I'll see you next time. Peace out.